Town officials and engineers of the Downtown Corridor project were at the HCAM studios to talk about the project and answer submitted questions as we near the special town meeting. Um, the realignment of the intersection downtown is one of the main features uh, that will improve um, traffic flow there and safety. I, I see <coughs> safety as a theme throughout this project. Um, the Marathon Way uh, will become much more safe as a frequent user of the common. Uh, I've always been nervous about that north uh, side of the common where Marathon Way shares road space with Main Street. It's kind of a big parking lot really, it's more than a way. And this will add some green space between Marathon Way and Main Street, creating a buffer for users and park on the north side. Uh, there's drainage issues downtown as you drive through over the past many years. You'll see it floods when there's flash floods, it just puddles up there. We're going to be fixing the drainage there, upgrading drainage throughout the project. Uh, today, uh, it would be very treacherous to ride your bike. I actually used to ride, try riding my bike to South Street. I was hit one day in front of Town Hall, and I haven't ridden the bike since then. $3.4 million of the $15 million project is covered by the town's taxpayers and was approved at previous town meetings. Could this project come in under budget? Yes. Could this project come in over budget? Yes the state would likely be on the hook for those items that the state is reimbursing or paying for, not reimbursing, but paying for through that $8.3 million. If that $8.3 million segment goes up, I believe the state will pay for that. If, the, uh, if we buy 28 trash cans instead of 22 trash cans and the aesthetics budget goes up, we would pay for that. But we would not pay for that without going back to town meeting and seeking additional funds through a future article if we have to increase the amount above the 3.4 that we've already uh, appropriated. One of the biggest topics of discussion was land easements that are part of the project. And what Amanda's going to pull up here, uh, and then Joe, you can kind of jump back in, is going to be the easement plan from the far west of the project to the far east of the project over by the common. There's three colors on here. There's light blue, which is temporary easements. And as she scrolls, and maybe she'll scroll a couple of times, you'll see most of this is light blue. Light blue means it's a temporary easement, and when the construction is done, the easement goes away. And then there's orange, which is a permanent easement. Most of that's around the intersection straightening area with a couple of other spots along the corridor. Uh, and then there's the dark blue. The dark blue are the utility easements that Joe has described. Um, we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. In some cases, it is only one or two feet. In others, there's five or even 10 feet of space that people are currently utilizing as their front yard that is in actuality part of the public right-of-way. Now, because we are doing widening um, in some parts of the project and we are adding in bicycle accommodations and in some areas there are no sidewalks at, at the current time and we're including sidewalks, that means we do have to recover that right-of-way and use it for bicycle accommodations and sidewalk accommodations. So um, if the sidewalk, or in this case at the intersection where we're realigning the roadway, the roadway itself is going beyond the public right-of-way, we are showing a permanent easement. Um, if, there, if a permanent easement is not required on your property, it's because the sidewalk is actually within the public right-of-way. And it's scary. I, I know that a lot of people, um, you know, they're maintaining it. They think it's theirs. But in actuality, legally, the public right-of-way is where the, the layout line has been designated and, and we'll, we're doing our best to stay within the public right-of-way. A project manager from the project design firm, VHB, Amanda Bazinet, discussed that there is federal guidelines when it comes to land easements. This whole process there, there are federal guidelines laid out. The town is following them. They've hired an appraiser and a review appraisal, which is required. And the appraisers will be the ones that are determining how, um, how to compensate people. And we as designers in the town, they are not making those decisions. It is being handled by a separate party. And, and when they are prepared to share that information, it will go out to the owners. There is also a process in place. If the property owner doesn't, 
agree with the assessed value, um, there is a, a process in place for, for them to contest it and then it will go through, through the legal system until a compromise is made. It We're ready to get to that point where we can say, this is what will happen. It will only move two feet. We will regrade that new wall. We will put in plantings. And we put that in writing to them through the town manager's office. Um, so it's, it's a little hard when people don't trust their elected officials that we're trying to do the right thing on behalf of people. But when we can and we can put it in writing, we will do that as well to prove to people that we're trying everything we possibly can. Some of the other discussion topics about the project included bike lanes and the effects to the town common. You can view the full forum online at our YouTube page and a website, hcam.tv. The special town meeting to vote on the project takes place on Monday, December 9th at 7 p.m. at Hopkinton Middle School.